Some of the strongest cards in the Pokemon TCG are cards that don't actually let your opponent play the game. The concept of disruption goes as far back as the first Pokemon TCG sets, and today we'll take a look at some of the most powerful cards in the game's history that force your opponent to sit and watch while you get to play the game. And at number 10, we've got Stoutland from Black and White Boundaries Cross. Its Sentinel ability prevents your opponent from using any supporter cards as long as this card is in the active spot. Wild Tackle deals 90 damage for 3 colorless energy, and deals 20 damage to Stoutland if it requires a coin flip and lands on tails. Stoutland can definitely be considered a late bloomer, as it was never considered anywhere close to playable, even with an ability as strong as Sentinel, but later it became a relevant card in the expanded format. It took many sets for Stoutland to finally see play by becoming one of the most annoying stall decks to play against. Many decks in the expanded format only run supporter cards to potentially switch out their Pokemon in case of special conditions, which meant that pairing Stoutland with Pokemon that could paralyze while being on the bench would be the first step to making it playable. Upon putting it into play, Raichu from Sun and Moon and Burning Shadows could use its Evo Shock ability to leave the defending Pokemon paralyzed. The item card Devolution Spray would then allow you to pick up Raichu again to use it on the next turn by devolving it. At the core, this was a strategy, but four copies of Devolution Spray paired with four Raichu would not be enough to deck your opponent out. But thankfully for Stoutland, its basic stage Lilypup from Black and White had the attack pickup, which added back one card from the discard pile to the hand, allowing for infinite Devolution Sprays. The last problem to solve was using Lilypup while still being able to keep Stoutland as the active Pokemon so that its Sentinel ability would not get shut off. At first, a Celebi EX from Black and White Boundaries Cross would fill that requirement due to its time recall ability that allowed any of your evolution Pokemon to use attacks from their previous stages. But it became even easier when Memory Energy was released in the Sun and Moon Lost Thunder. This card provided one colorless energy, the exact requirement for Lilypup's attack, and allowed you to use attacks from previous stages, just like Celebi EX, making it much easier to pull off by not needing to bench additional Pokemon and simply attaching a singular energy. This deck was able to steal some games at tournaments, but at the end of the day, it was just too fragile against singular counter cards like Switch, an item card that switches out the active Pokemon, or abilities that prevent special conditions. If we should ever see this ability again on a Pokemon that maybe has a better attack, there is definitely room for it to see more success. Because blocking supporter cards is one of the best lock options, which is why Stoutland makes it onto this list. And at number 9, we have Temple of Sinnoh, a fairly recent card from Sword and Shield Astral Radiance. As long as this card is in play, any special energies attached to Pokemon in play only count as one colorless energy and lose all of their additional effects. This makes it an incredibly powerful tool against decks that use special energies, and there are a lot of them. The two most prominent ones are Reggie decks that use Reggie Gigas from Astral Radiance's Ancient Wisdom ability, which lets you attach three special energies from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon, as long as you have any of the other five Reggie Pokemon in play. This in itself is not always the easiest task because you have to find six specific Pokemon. But add Temple of Sino in play to the mix, which changes the three energies that are attached from the discard pile to three colorless ones, and life gets much harder for Regidex. The second deck is Lugia V-Star from Sword and Shield Silver Tempest, which uses its Summoning Star ability to put up to two colorless Pokemon from the discard pile into play. This is most commonly used to put Archaeops from the same set into play. Archaeops uses its Primal Turbo ability to attach up to two special energies from the deck to a Pokemon of your choice. Once again, Temple of Sino would change these cards into colorless energies with no further effects, but Lugia has a much easier time to deal with it than Regigigas does due to its attack Tempest Dive, which requires four colorless energies and a discard a stadium in play. This means the attack could still be used under Temple of Sino because two Archaeops could still supply Lugia V-Star with the necessary energies while also getting rid of Temple of Sino for upcoming turns. This, however, doesn't mean that Temple of Sino is completely useless against Lugia V-Star decks, because it still locks them out of using any of their other attackers, or if there aren't even any Lugia in play, from potentially attacking with a good attacker at all. A similar card to Temple of Sino exists all the way back in 2006 with Crystal Breach from EX Crystal Guardians. This card would only change energy cards that supply two or more energies into a singular colorless energy, making Temple of Sino the undisputed best stadium for special energy disruption and getting it onto this list. And at number 8, we have Path to the Peak, a stadium card that prevents any Pokemon with a rule box from using their abilities. Pokemon with rule boxes are cards that are part of a specific mechanic, such as Radiant Pokemon or Vs or V-Stars. This continuous effect of shutting down abilities has existed in the Pokemon TCG many times before and has always seen a lot of success. It started off with Battle Frontier from EX Emerald, which prevented any of all Pokemon of the Darkness, Metal, or Colorless type to use any abilities, or as they were called back then, Poke Powers and Poke Bodies. After a couple of years, the next stadium in line was Silent Lab from X and Y Primal Clash, which prevented basic Pokemon in play, either player's hand or in the discard pile from using their abilities. After four more years, Power Plant from Sun and Moon on Broken Bonds removed abilities in play from GX and EX Pokemon, which made it very similar to Path to the Peak, which is the most recent stadium in that lineup, being released in Sword and Shield Chilling Rain in 2021. 
All of these stadiums were highly influential during their time in the game, as many decks rely a lot on using abilities to set up their strategies, or in some cases, even base their entire strategy upon using powerful abilities to win the game. Shutting off these abilities can help slower decks to even the playing field, or decks that don't need to use any abilities at all to gain an even bigger edge. There is definitely an argument to be held about which one between Silent Lab or Path to the Peak is the most powerful one, but based on recency bias and the potential of what it can still do throughout its life cycle, we've decided to put Path to the Peak as the representative of this type of card. And at number 7, we've got Trevenant from X and Y. Its Forest Curse ability prevents your opponent from using any item cards in their hand as long as Trevenant is in your active spot. Its attack Tree Slam deals 60 damage for one Psychic and two Carless Energy, and deals 20 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. At first, Trevenant was mainly used as attackers that could switch to this card after attacking, such as Excelgore from Black and White Dark Explorers. Its deck and cover attack dealt 50 damage, left the opposing Pokemon paralyzed and confused, causing it to not be able to attack or move while receiving 10 damage between turns, and shuffled Excelgore on all cards attached to it back into the deck, allowing you to promote Trevenant into the active spot. This could even be combined with Dust Noir from Black and White Boundaries Cross, which could use its Sinister Hand ability to move damage counters from any of your opponent's Pokemon to a different one, meaning that their active Pokemon would remain stuck if you could pull off deck and cover in multiple turns and then prevent the defending Pokemon from being knocked out by spreading the damage elsewhere and eventually taking all of your prize cards while watching your opponent being unable to attack. This created a perfect lock of sorts. Trevenant's time as its own main attacker came when X and Y Breakpoint was released because it brought two new tools to the table. The first one was Phantump with its Ascension attack. For one colorless energy, it would grab a Pokemon from the deck that it could evolve into and place it on top of itself, meaning you could evolve into Trevenant on the first turn if you went second and got to attack. Trevenant also got a new attacker, but this time it didn't have to switch into it, but instead evolve itself. Trevenant Break was an evolution card for Trevenant that boosted up its HP and gave it access to a new attack, while also keeping the Tree Slam as an attacking option. Silent Fear puts three damage counters on all of your opponent's Pokemon for one Psychic and one Cutlass Energy making it much more energy efficient than Tree Slam with the downside of dealing less damage to the defending Pokemon. The final piece for Trevenant's success came in X and Y Phantom Forces. This stadium card, Dimension Valley, removed one colorless cost from each attack on Psychic-type Pokemon, which meant that Trevenant would now be able to attack with Silent Fear for just one Psychic Energy, and could even use Tree Slam for one Psychic and one colorless. During its time, Trevenant was a disrupted threat with multiple good damaging options, getting it a well-deserved spot on this list. And at number 6, we have Seismitoad EX from X and Y Furious Fist. Its Quaking Punch attack deals 30 damage for 2 colorless energy and prevents your opponent from using any item cards during their next turn. Grenade Hammer deals 130 damage and 30 damage to 2 of your bench Pokemon for 2 water and colorless energy. Ever since Seismitoad EX was released, it found its way into many decks as a tech option to slow down your opponent's turn due to its versatile nature by only requiring colorless energy for its item lock attack. After some time, players discovered that this card would also be good enough as a standalone attacker by pairing it with disruptive items and supporter cards to prevent your opponent from properly playing the game. The most notorious version of Seismitoad EX deck that used it as a main attacker was the pairing with Surpluff from X and Y. Its tasting ability would either draw one card, or an additional second one if Slurpuff was in the active spot while using this ability. By setting up multiple Slurpuff, this supplied the deck with enough draw power to get access to multiple disruptive item cards per turn. The icing on the cake was Lysandra's Trump card, a supporter that shuffled both players' discard piles back into the deck to reset the game state. This meant that Seismitoad could reuse its disrupted tools turn after turn while drawing new cards with tasting and resetting resources with Lysandra's Trump card until it would eventually take a knockout and repeat the process until the game would end. This infinite resource loop eventually led to Lysandra's Trump card being banned from competitive play, but that didn't stop Seismitoad EX from always finding new ways to become relevant again. A completely different style of deck came around in 2016 when a more aggressive deck made its debut. Instead of focusing on Quaking Punch, this deck would try to use Grenade Hammer quickly to apply pressure thanks to Max Elixir, an item that looked at the top 6 cards and attached a basic energy would find there to a bench Pokemon. This deck still kept Quaking Punch as a tool to slow down your opponent, but was fundamentally different to the Surpluff Control deck from before. Its versatility, disruptive oppression, and meta relevance over a long period of time makes Seismitoad EX one of the best disruption attackers of all time, and get it a rightful place on our list. And at number 5, we've got Vileplume from X and Y Ancient Origins. Its Irritating Pollen ability prevents either player from playing any item cards in their hand as long as this Pokemon is in play, making it one of the most oppressive lock cards of all time. You can still use any attackers of your choice without having to worry about potentially shutting off its ability. Unlike cards like Spirit Tomb, Trevenant, and Stutland that we've talked about previously, its attack Solar Beam does 70 damage for 2 Grass and 1 Colorless Energy, but was basically never used, as Vileplume would usually just hang out on the bench. This wasn't the first time that an ability like this was printed, and it wasn't even the first Vileplume that did it. Vileplume from Heart Gold and Soul Silver Undaunted, with its Allergy Flower Pokebody, 
and Dark Vileplume from Team Rocket, with the Poke Power Hay Fever, all the way back in 2000, did exactly the same by preventing both players from using item cards. Playability wise, the most recent iteration of this ability was definitely the easiest version to set up. While still being legal in the standard format, it got to make use of the stadium card Forest of Giant Plant, which allowed Grass Pokemon to evolve immediately without having to wait the usual turn. This combination was incredibly strong, especially when paired with Shaming EX and its setup ability that lets you draw until you had 6 cards in hand once you put it into play, making it very easy to get access to Forest of Giant Plants and your Vileplume pieces to get into play as early as turn 1. On top of that, the deck could use Decidueye GX as a damage tool due to its Feather Arrow ability that put 20 damage on one of your opponent's Pokemon and having the attacks Razor Leaf to do 90 for 1 Grass and 2 Colorless Energy and Hollow Hunt GX to recover 3 cards in the discard pile for 1 Energy but having the drawback of being a GX attack and only usable once per duel. Both of them could make great use to force the giant plants and become one of the best decks at the time. Even after rotating, Vileplume's journey didn't stop. In the expanded format, the addition of Rowlet and Alolan Executor GX breathed new life into it with the attack Super Growth, that for no energy cost, evolved one of your bench grass Pokemon all the way up to its final stage from the deck. This meant that your first attack of the game could evolve an Oddish into Gloom all the way up to Vileplume as soon as your first turn, as long as you got to attack. An ability like Vileplume will always see play because of how restrictive it is, which is why it made onto this list. And at number 4, we have Spirit Tomb from Platinum Arceus. Its Keystone Seal Pokebody prevents both players from playing any item cards from their hand. This in combination with its Darkness Grace attack that can be used without any energy attached to Spirit Tomb to evolve one of your bench Pokemon at the cost of putting one damage counter on it, made it a powerful setup tool for slower decks by slowing down your opponent and giving you access to your evolution Pokemon. Compared to the card design nowadays, Spirit Tomb might be confusing at first because Pokebot is no longer part of the game, but have simply become abilities since then, so that's an easy solution for any kind of confusion. On top of that, its Pokebody says that it blocks any trainer cards, which is simply caused by supporter and stadium cards having been different categories of cards, but still usable under the lock of Keystone Seal. Back when Spirit Tomb was around, it was used in many decks to set up support Pokemon and attackers on the bench. Some of the most frequently used Pokemon that we put into play were Claydol from Diamond and Pearl Great Encounters, which would use its Poke Power, Cosmic Power, to put up to two cards in the bottom of the deck and then draw it until it had six cards in hand, supplying players consistently with new cards over multiple turns. A commonly evolved attacker was Gengar from Diamond and Pearl Stormfront, which didn't just benefit from being put into play easily by Darkness Grace, but would also benefit from the item block of Keystone Seal due to its attack Poltergeist which dealt 30 damage for each trainer card in your opponent's hand for a Psychic and Colorless Energy. Spirit Tomb could also be used to put other lock mechanisms into play, like when it was used to set up Vileplume from Heart Gold and Soul Silver Undaunted, which would block both players from using items as long as it was in play with its Allergy Flower Pokebody, removing Spirit Tomb's requirements of having to stay in the active spot. Its setup and lock power in combination with being easily usable due to being a basic makes Spirit Tomb one of the best cards ever. And at number 3, we have Archaeops from Black and White Noble Victories. Just like many other cards on this list, its power comes from being in play continuously while using other attackers to benefit from its disruptive ability, Ancient Power. This ability prevents both players from playing any of their Pokémon in hand to evolve a Pokémon in play, which is crucial to playing the Pokémon trading card game. This ability would be used in combination with basic attackers to mitigate the negative impact on the player that would use Archaeops themselves. Being a Stage 1 Pokémon wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, but being the final stage of a fossil Pokemon meant that you couldn't just simply put its previous stage, Arcan, into play and evolve the turn after. Nowadays, the fossils are trainer cards that are put into play just like basic Pokemon, but back then you had to use Plume Fossil to put Arcan into play with its effect. When played, Plume Fossil checked the bottom 7 cards of your deck for any Arcan cards and would put one of them into play. This added a random factor to the usability of fossils, which resulted in most of them being unplayable, even with powerful abilities like Archaeops. After waiting for 4 years, Archaeops finally got its time in the spotlight when Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick was released in X and Y Primal Clash. This card could only be played if it was the last card in your hand, and would put a fighting Pokemon of any stage onto your bench while also drawing 5 new cards. As you may have noticed, both of these cards are released in different eras of the game. One in Black and White and one in X and Y, which meant they never actually coexisted in the standard format of the Pokemon TCG. 2015 was the first time that the expanded format was introduced a format that wouldn't care about rotation and just always include every card from black and white onwards. This opened up a lot of new combinations of cards that would have never been possible in the standard format, and one of the first strong expanded exclusive combinations was using Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick to get Archaeops into play. While getting down to only one card in hand might not seem super easy, the large axis of item cards at the time that would help you meet this condition made it very easy to get the card into play, if your deck was built around it. Archaeops eventually became so oppressive in the expanded format that it caused the introduction of the ban list to the format, and even today it remains on this list, making it one of the most powerful cards that restricts your opponent from playing the game as they want. 
And at number 2, we have Gengar and Mimikyu GX from Sun and Moon team up. Its Poltergeist attack lets you look at your opponent's hand and deal 50 damage for each trainer card you found there, including items, tools, stadiums, and supporter cards. But the reason it made onto this list as one of the best cards to prevent your opponent from playing cards is its GX attack, Horror House GX. For one, Psychic Energy, it prevents your opponent from playing any cards from their hand during the next turn, and if it has an additional Psychic Energy attached to it, forces both players to draw until they have 7 cards in their hand, working perfectly in combination with Poltergeist to deal a ton of damage on the following turn. While this attack is incredibly disrupting by completely locking your opponent out of using their cards in hand, the downside of it is that it could only be used once per game, as it is a GX attack. GX attacks were a mechanic introduced in Sun and Moon that would allow players to use a powerful and oftentimes incredibly unique attack. They could use an attack to swing for game in their favor, or establish their lead even further. You can only use one of them in total, so if your deck was running multiple different GX attacks, you had to pick the one that was the most suitable for the current game. While Gengar and Mimikyu was already a very strong card by itself, completely relying on Poltergeist would usually not be enough to win games as your opponent could simply play their trainer cards after the Horror House GX turn had passed, making them able to control the future damage output of Poltergeist. One way to make it work was the inclusion of Amistar from Team Up with its Fossil Bind ability that prevented your opponent from using any item cards as long as they had more Pokemon in play than you did. This kind of deck relied purely on Gengar and Mimikyu as attackers as you couldn't afford to use extra bench space because it would shut off Amistar. This deck also included the item card Surprise Box, which put a card from your opponent's discard pile back into their hand, making sure that any item they used before Amistar was activated would end up back in their hand, increasing the damage of Poltergeist. A much more popular and also successful partner for this card was Mewtwo and Mew GX. Its perfection ability allows the use of any attack on an EX or GX Pokemon in the discard pile, as long as the necessary energies were attached to it. This worked perfectly with House Horror GX, as the attack would be used first to slow down your opponent, while being followed up by the attack from a completely different Pokemon, without having to attach another attacker. Another popular combination that involved Gengar Mimikyu GX was Malamar from Forbidden Lights. Its Psychic Recharge ability attached a Psychic Energy to any of your bench Pokemon, and could be repeated up to the number of Malamar in play, making it easy to not just power up Gengar Mimikyu GX, but also to retreat it out and use a different attacker. Oftentimes, this would be used in combination with Trevenant and Destiny R GX's attack Nightwatch to shuffle two of your opponent's cards in hand back into their deck. You might think this is pretty counterproductive after giving them 7 cards with House Horror GX, but the fact that it could be used without letting your opponent draw by attaching just one energy to Gengar Mimikyu, or that it can be paired with an item or support card that would shuffle their hand into their deck, made it a strong option. Most of the time, Marnie would be used to do exactly that, by putting your opponent's hand on the bottom of their deck and letting them draw 4 while you do the same but with 5 cards instead. Completely locking your opponent out of playing any cards makes Gengar or Mimikyu one of the best cards when it came to not letting your opponent play the game. And at number 1, we have Garbodor from X and Y Breakpoint and Garbodor from Black and White Dragons Exalted. Both of them share the ability Garbotoxin, that removed any abilities from Pokemon in play as long as Garbodor had a tool card attached to it. Both of them have different attacks, but neither of them are frequently used, which is why both of these are being put in the same spot on this list. Throughout its legality for tournament play, these Garbodors have been among the most influential cards in the history of the game starting as early as 2012 when the Dragon's Exalted version was first released. It would often be paired together with powerful basic Pokemon as their partner to apply pressure to your opponent while disrupting their setup with Garbatoxin. Some of its initial success was seen by being paired with Darkrai EX from Black and White Dark Explorers, with the Dark Cloak ability that gave all of your Pokemon in play with the Darkness energy attached to them free retreat cost, and the Night Spear attack that dealt 90 damage to active Pokemon and 30 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This already shows how powerful of a card Garbodor was, with Darkrai EX willingly giving up its powerful ability to focus on disruption of the opposing player. What made the deck so powerful was Dark Patch, an item card that attached a Darkness energy from the discard pile to a bench Dark-type Pokemon, allowing for Darkrai EX to be powered up much quicker than just by manually attaching each turn. The next big step in Garbodor's history came in 2014 when the first X and Y expansion was released. Yvetal EX was a new powerful attacker to be paired with Garbodor due to its versatility. Just like Landorus EX, it came with two attacks, an Evil Ball, which dealt 20 damage plus an extra 20 for each energy attached to both Pokemon for a Darkness and Colorless energy, and Ycyclone, which dealt 90 damage for a Darkness energy and two Colorless and required you to move an energy from this card to a bench Pokemon, oftentimes being a different Yvetal EX. Just like Darkrai EX, this card benefited heavily from being able to use Dark Patch to apply early pressure, but also having late game power due to Evil Ball's high damage potential. Only two sets later in X and Y Furious Fist, Garbodor got its next powerful partner in Seismitoad EX. For two colorless energy, its Quaking Punch attack prevented your opponent from using any item cards during the next turn, and Grenade Hammer dealt 130 damage for two water energy and one colorless, but required you to deal 30 damage to two of your own bench Pokemon. Its versatility due to needing colorless energy for Quaking Punch would often see Seismitoad EX being played alongside cards like Yvetal EX or Darkrai EX rather than being its own deck. 
Later down the line, some decks focus solely on Seismitoad EX as their attacker by focusing more on its disruptive nature. This continued until 2016 when the new Garbodor from XY Breakpoint entered the game. Most decks didn't mind still using the older version because both of them shared the same HP and retreat costs, so unless you played a Psychic Energy in your deck, the attack would never matter anyway. The success story of Garbotoxin continued throughout the first part of the 2016-2017 competitive season, where Evital EX completely dominated the game. Just like in the years before, the second part of the 2016-2017 season wasn't the end for Garbotoxin. It simply found new partners. Espeon GX from Sun and Moon, as well as Drampa GX from Sun and Moon Guardians Rising, became the new rising stars of the format. Espeon GX's Psybeam dealt 30 damage for one energy and left your opponent's active Pokemon confused, something that could be very hard to deal with while being ability locked. Psychic did 60 damage for one Psychic Energy and two Colorless Energy, but added an extra 30 damage for each energy attached to the defending Pokemon. Its GX attack, a mechanic that can only be used once per game, put 10 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you liked, making it a perfect tool to disrupt setup or set up knockouts for future turns. Drampa GX provided some extra disruption with its Righteous Edge attack that dealt 20 damage for one Colorless Energy, but could also discard a special energy attached to the defending Pokemon. Berserk was its main damage attack by dealing 80 damage for 3 colorless energy and adding an extra 70 if one of your bench Pokemon had any damage counters on them. Its GX attack provided some consistency by shuffling your hand into your deck and drawing 10 new cards. The final partner for Garbodor was Zorark GX, two cards that up until then had been arch enemies due to Garbodor shutting off Zorark's trade ability, which allowed you to discard a card and draw two more, a powerful draw ability that each of your Zorark GX in play could use once per turn. Riotous Beating did 20 damage for each Pokemon you had in play for 2 colorless energy. Throughout its time, there were many other decks that used Garbotoxin in combination with powerful attackers, but the ones mentioned were some of the most successful ones. Its longevity and the fact that it won US Nationals in 2015, multiple international championships and crowned itself World Championship in 2018 makes Garbotoxin one of the longest standing, most powerful, and most successful disruption abilities of all time, clearly cementing it the first place on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any of the Pokemon you think we may have missed, or do you have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, please let us know down in the comments below.